Hello, lovely people. Good morning, happy Sunday. Welcome back to Ravi's Focus Hive. Well, have you ever heard of the term called OCB? Organizational Citizenship Behavior. Uh, I'm going to define that today. And actually, the reason I'm going to define that is that uh, I actually want to talk about something exactly opposite which is very important for each of the managers, each of the employees to find, acknowledge and address. Because the cost involved to keep something, what I'm going to explain today, is very high and we need to quickly act on it. OCB, Organizational citizenship behavior so it's a set of behaviors that cannot or that are not actually recognized by the formal reward system but the aggregate of that promotes functioning of your organization so these are the behaviors that we want to inculcate that we want to reward that we want to promote within ourselves, within our team members, within everyone that we work with, because this is a positive thing to have. And what we need to really find is exactly opposite of it, which means behaviors that demotes or that affects the functioning of the organization and employees or leaders or managers or whoever it may be if they have such behaviors they are categorized as toxic employees so today's video is dedicated to finding out toxic employees uh, figuring out a strategic way to solve the problem decide whether you need to really help that employee decide whether you really need to manage that toxicity within your team find out what is the cost involved if you don't manage it because hmm, because most of the time you would find or you will have a dilemma because you'll have a very high performing employee with a toxic behavior. And as a manager, you will be in a dilemma that would you want to replace that employee because it will be very difficult to find a replacement as he's top of his game, right? He's doing great. All the numbers are uh, just above the benchmark. He's chart buster and uh, it's difficult. So now that uh, we have established uh, as to what we are going to talk about today, uh, let us look at some of the characteristics that we can look at and identify such employees. The whole idea or the whole reason why I'm doing this uh, video is a lot of uh, times I have found people in dilemma in situations where uh, they, they feel not very comfortable because the employee in question is one of the top performers or the top performer in the team and just by bringing the topic out and having a discussion would cause him or her to either aggravate the behavior or maybe uh, fear of losing them causes some of the managers not to really worry or act on it. So that's the whole reason I want to bring out certain aspects which would make it easy for you to uh, give you a better perspective to understand why it is super important to act, it, act and fix and solve the situation uh, at the very beginning or at least when you have identified it, you should act, it, act on it super fast. So before we go on uh, how to 
act on it or why to act on it let us look at some of the characteristics that kind of we should be on the watch out right so it could be something very simple and solution to that would be just a coffee talk and it could be something really severe something criminal in nature and then uh, all you have to do is to raise an alarm to the right people and they would take care of it but the question here is to understand certain characteristics that you uh, notice or somebody brings uh, that kind of behavior to you or someone raises an alert or an alarm for you to uh, look at that behavior so simple one would be that irregular attendance people or a specific employee just does not turn up to office every day and irregular uh, availability missing deadlines know it all attitude uh, showing that they are working more than others and then early burnout signals uh, and uh, people who snap at each other uh, i mean there are there there are many things that kind of affects the team or working culture of the team so anything that does that uh, needs to be fixed when i see say employee um I'm kind of categorizing everybody in the organization as an employee and not just the employees or not just the ICs, not just the individual contributors, everyone, right? It could be a manager, it could be a director, it could be anyone who, who is in, who's working there and their behavior might cause problems for others or could be, uh, as I defined, it could be one of the roadblocks for the organization to function effectively. So. it could be a manager who's a, who's who does micromanaging it could be someone who judges people in front of their colleagues it could be someone who who shares negative comments uh, to employees to employees in front of everybody else or uh, does not kind of respect uh, employees in terms of their privacy and uh, shares performance related details with others and starts comparing them uh, and these are bad behaviors and they need to be addressed as well i believe it needs to be fixed as early as possible so so what you have a person in your team who's kind of bringing in all the greater deals but he or she doesn't have respect for anyone uh should you really act on it should you talk to that person should you let them know that the behavior is not good and that's affecting others or you should be happy enough that one person is bringing enough enough dollars that uh, is good enough for the company and if you lose that person it will be a bigger dent than you think well the, to answer that question is pretty much the setting of the context as to why we should solve it what is the cost of not solving it because from my perspective if a bad behavior is not taken care of the most or the first uh, effect that happens is the rest of the team feels that it's one of the approved behavior what i mean to say is that if let's say you have a person who's 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 a top performer and they have really bad behavior they they just don't they are a repellent in the team they just cannot work with anyone and uh, if they are celebrated because of their work uh, achievements what happens to the rest of the team is that they start feeling that the kind of behavior this employee does is approved of and they would start doing the same thing and you will have a much bigger impact the other problem that it brings is that 
some of your team members will lose trust in the leadership, will lose respect for you or the whole of the management team and then start looking uh, for a better and a safer work environment without letting you know. So in my opinion, these are really costly effects. Uh, it also affects the team morale. Uh, your team may not be comfortable around that person. Uh, so summing it up, not acting or not addressing the problem with that one individual uh, encourages and affects the whole team, right? It's like a bad apple in the box slowly and steadily will ruin the whole set of apples. No matter you put it in a freezer, no matter you put it in out in the sun, it's going to affect. And all you have to do is pick that rotten apple and put it aside or throw it in the dustbin. You got to do something about it, right? Because if you don't, all the apples are going to turn dirty. So that's the reason why you should solve this problem. You should address the behavior. You should take care and uh, change the toxic employee and turn them around to be a better person, a better team member, a more productive uh, employee within the group. So you'd ask me, well, now we know what is toxic employee. I know I should act upon it. How should I do it? Well, I'm no expert. And I would only be able to recommend some readings, which I will put in the description. But from my personal experience uh, and what I've seen in some of the great leaders that I've worked with is number one is to understand the underlying reasons behind the behavior because if we don't we'll start being judgmental and uh, we don't want to be that because we want to solve the problem and not create more of them right so we want to actually fix the behavior and not the person right we don't want to change the employee but we want to change the behavior of that employee and how do we do that? We should make sure that the employee understands the outcomes or the effects of their behavior. How, when they behaved in a certain way, has affected whoever it has affected. So it's important that we communicate that. And it's important that we find the underlying behavior. It could be something that happened in past it could be something that is not related to what it happened now it could be something that had triggered it so if you are able to find that with your dialogue with the employee you'll be able to fix it really quick one other aspect of handling toxicity in the team is that uh, you being the manager or the leader in the team may not be able to always be aware of every dynamics right everything that's happening within the 24 hours so you might have to depend on people within the team, everybody else. And uh, so what happens is most of the time or a lot of the time, uh, other employees would come in and uh, raise a flag to you or give a written complaint or, or just a verbal complaint to you. So it's very important that we take those feedbacks and not just brush them off. Uh, we should document everything precisely and uh, ask relevant and precise questions to the person who's giving that complaint so that you understand the context accurately and then you take it further with the other employee that is accused of but you need to do your research as well right but uh, by adding this in this discussion what i want to highlight is uh, take every complaint that comes by you whenever an employee is coming and telling you about another employee take it seriously 
because the person who is complaining uh, should not feel that they did it in vain should not feel that you did not listen to them right uh, because sometimes some of the employees just want to kind of make you aware and uh, if you are able to convey that message back that i've heard it i've understood it and it will be taken care i think a lot of times things gets fixed right there and because you have that kind of a characteristic as a leader that you will by default go ahead and take care of that situation it's very important that you understand that it's 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 really critical to convey this message back to the person who is raising the alarm that's also very important all right so along with understanding the underlying reason of the behavior uh, and then dialogue with the accused employee uh, you help them understand the effects of their behavior and start with a verbal warning that uh, they should be able to fix it and uh, majority of that time they fix it however include your hr team and uh, give a written warning document everything within the employee docket and uh, let the employee know the effects of uh, failure to adhere and uh, yeah and work with the employee throughout the performance improvement plan and uh, yeah don't just do it as a formality that you have to kind of put someone in in this plan and then uh, you've already decided the outcome and just to get that outcome done you are going through the procedures and processes of hr don't do that because that's not healthy so you give a verbal warning to the employee if they don't really adhere to your feedbacks given a written warning include your hr in the discussion or at least let them be aware of what's going on and then when you are giving a performance improvement plan try to make it as a positive one because uh if you're just telling them what is wrong and if you they if they don't solve it within certain period they'll be fired is stupid what i believe is when you're giving a performance plan you should which which the format also suggests that you should have a weekly uh, tracking you should sit with the employee see how they are improving and uh, what i personally do is that i also talk to the employee and and try to give them a uh, work which would help them come out of pip because there are some employees who need little hand holding uh, and the whole idea of uh, putting anyone in in a pip situation is to help them improve give them that catalyst uh, in form of pip which kind of pushes them little more than what they were doing right so they get little push a little nudge to do better than what they were doing pip is never meant to make people feel that it's done i hope my expression conveyed the message it's over right it should never convey that it should always convey that this is a little push from behind to make you work a bit extra think a bit extra look at what you do a bit extra reflect at how you work a little extra be cautious a little extra that's the whole reason and these were the things that i wanted to talk about today so the whole idea of us is to make sure that our team is rocking performing and helping each other it's a team game alone we cannot win anything see you now next week bye bye